and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good. Uh, today I'm sharing my screen using tablet. So I'm not sure really how good that is going to be. Uh, please let me know if the sound quality is good and if everything is working fine. Uh, let me check. I'm trying to check here. Oh, look, my screen coming so small. Interesting. Um, in this case, I have to hide this page here. I'm using a tablet, so forgive me. <laughs> Let me see this here. Am I heard, guys? Am I heard? No, I'm not using the phone, actually. I'm using a tablet. And let us see now how it's going to be. I hope now it's going to be better. Uh, all right, I think now it's better than before. Uh, first of all, I, uh, uh, I want to thank you all for waiting for long to be here. And I hope today we'll have a good topic with you. I'm still abroad. This is why I'm using a tablet, not really a computer. And uh, I'm using very basic equipment. So I don't know how the voice, how good it is, and how the quality of the picture. Now, uh, one Muslim, he sent me this. And I think this is a, a website. As you see in the top, it says Al Ahmadiyya. Al Ahmadiyya is just another stupid cult created out of the stupid cult of Islam. Al Ahmadiyya is people who believe that uh, there is a guy, his name Ahmad Mirza Ghulam. He was born in India. And uh, he was married for three years, and then he had a transgender. He became Jesus. And then he claimed to be the Messiah. And he used to work in the post office for Her Majesty the Queen. So uh, uh, the Messiah of the Ahmadiyya was an employee of Her Majesty the Queen of England. Uh, you know, when, when, uh, when Muslim, regardless what kind of cult they are, all of them, they are the same at the end of the day. Islam, the original Islam is a cult, and whatever come out of it, whatever come out of a cult is going to be a cult. So don't expect something more truthful. In the front of us, we will see here an article says, Jesus, prophet of God, by Muhammad uh, Zafurullah Khan. And this is supposedly a, a paper was uh, uh, this guy here read in a conference. Content, introduction, Jesus, a prophet of God. Here I want to stop with any Muslim is listening. How you can prove to me that Jesus is a prophet? Forget about him being a son of God. How we can prove that Jesus is a prophet in Islam? I mean, this is the most stupid thing ever. All what the Quran says about Jesus prove nothing that Jesus was even exist or he was a prophet. All of the only prophecy Jesus he mentioned in the Quran that there is a prophet will come after me. His name is Ahmad. Okay. <laughs> but your prophet name is not even Ahmad so when you say to me Jesus the prophet of God should you give me his book his prophecies what he did you know nothing about Jesus or oh, what even the name Jesus is not exist in the Quran they have a guy his name is Isa we do not know who is Isa anyone heard of Isa Cannot be found in the books of history, cannot be found in the book of the Christians, cannot be found in the books of the Jews, cannot be found even in the museum. So who is this guy, Isa? We do not know. So when a Muslim try to introduce to us a person, shouldn't you first ever know who is he, where he live? If we go open the Quran right now, and I challenge a Muslim to tell me, from the Quran, who is the Isa and where he was born? Nothing. What the language he speak? Nothing. Which land he was born in? Nothing. Okay, which which since a century? Which year? Nothing. Nothing. Or what the Quran says that there's a guy. His name is Isa. He was born of a woman. Her name is Mary, and she was a virgin. Thank you very much. So how do you want to teach us about Jesus from a book spoke nothing about Jesus? And how you are saying to me that a book which is written 600 years after Muhammad, actually it's not 600 years, it's more than 900 years, sorry, after Jesus. 
that book will introduce Jesus better than the book which is written a few years after Jesus. If you remember when uh, when uh, David Wood was debating with Mimi Hijab, Mimi Hijab, he says the book of uh, Mark written 60 years after Jesus. This is long time. No, <laughs> long time. <laughs> So 60 years after Jesus, according to him, not according to me, is long time. But Quran, who came, Muhammad himself, he came more than 600 years after Jesus. He never saw Jesus. He never spoke to Jesus. He don't speak the language of Jesus, and he is not from the land of Jesus. Yet he will introduce to us a guy, his name is Isa, not even Jesus. I mean, do you see the stupidity of the introduction? Who will give you the authority even to introduce Jesus to us. Who are you? You see, when I introduce someone to you, I should be a person who know that person very well. Who are they, those people who they are speaking about Jesus and they are trying to teach everybody about Jesus? By what? By one witness, he witnessed nothing. We have a guy, his name is Muhammad. He witnessed that Jesus is a prophet. But he never met Jesus, never spoke to Jesus. Don't speak the language of Jesus. And the top of that, according to Muslim, he do not know how to write, how to read. So imagine I open a history school, or I hire, I will hire in a in a in a, in a stupid university it's called Stanford, which is only for rich people, not for smart people really, or 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 those big names. And then I hire a teacher to teach you history. This guy, he do not know how to write. He do not know how to read. And you have to accept whatever he say. His name is Muhammad. Are you getting my point? Guys, let us maintain nice words in the text. We don't want to say a lady boy and those stuff. Please respect yourself. Otherwise, you force me to block you. Here we say things. You know, we, let us let us maintain a, a certain kind of language. So, Jesus, a prophet of God. Okay, how you wanna explain to me that Jesus, a prophet of God? Jesus was the last prophet in Israel. I mean, this is the most stupid thing ever. Jesus was the last prophet of Israel, but the Quran says different story. If we go in the Quran right now. Let me switch my uh, my streaming. Uh, give me a second. <laughs> you know, I like it. You know, stupidity is amazing. Stupidity is really amazing. Uh, let me open the Quran. I will be back in the screen in a second. Give me please a second. When we go in the Quran and we try to understand the Muslim logic and how, how they understand the religion, we will find the Muslims are the most confused people ever about their cult before they are confused about our belief. So, uh, if we go in the Quran, we will find the following. Let us see. Now we go back to the screen. Let us see. I will share the screen with you again. Just give me a second, please. I apologize for the misconvenience, but as you know, I am abroad. And actually, I have to do a lot of work to make this happen, to be sure that there's nobody around me and nobody uh, will bother me during this broadcast. Uh, in the same time, you have to be sure that you have a good internet which is not easy, really. Uh, let us go and switch again. Uh -huh. All right, we'll go back here. All right, we are back in the screen. Look with me. This is their silly Quran, the yellow pages of Muhammad. The chapter, yes. Have you ever heard of a chapter called yes? 
No, it's not yes. It is Yasin. Yasin. This is the god Sin. And the Muslim do not know why even the name is exist there. Because this is a pagan cult. Ya is a word meaning God. And Sin is Sin. The god Sin, which is the same god uh, uh, of the moon god. You can search it right now in Google. You will find that Sin is the moon god. Ya is a word meaning God. And Sin mean the, the, is the name of the God. So, yes, yeah, sin. Nice to meet you. In chapter 36, verse number 12, it says uh, that there is a there is a uh, messengers were sent supposedly by Jesus. And those messengers who sent by Jesus, first in the beginning, they were two. And the two who was sent by Jesus, they've been accused of lying. Then Jesus, he stringed the two by the third. And those three, if we go to the book of Ibn Kathir and many other explanations by Muslims, you will see the three are John and uh, John, which is Yohanna in Arabic, and Peter. And Paul, Paul, the Muslim keep attacking him. Paul, the one who corrupt called Paul. Paul in Islamic books is a messenger of Allah. In the same time, he is a messenger of Jesus. But look at this. How in this stupid article, you say to me that Muhammad Jesus was the last messenger to the Jews. If your book saying that there's a three messengers was sent by Jesus to the city of Antioch. And how you Muslim, you keep saying that Jesus was a messenger to the Jews, but yet Jesus sent in his disciples to the people of Antioch, which at under that time, they are Syrian, Aramaic, and they are Greek. Jesus, the prophet of God, he was sent to the Jews. That's what the Muslim, they teach. But their Quran saying that Jesus, the messenger of Allah, he sent messengers. So how he is a messenger, but he can make me a messenger of God. To make it simple for you, if you are a surgeon in the army, and you cannot make someone else surgeon like you. You need somebody higher than you, higher rank, have authority. So who is the one having authority to make Paul a messenger? Who is the one having authority to make Peter a messenger of God? Not a messenger to deliver a message. Read carefully. This is the Quran in front of you. This is the yellow pages of the Muhammadan. We sent to them two messengers. Who is saying we here? The Muslim, they will say we, we, we. When you say we, 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 this is Allah. Okay. The we, we is Allah. But those are the we of Jesus. Those are the disciple of Jesus. And all the Muslims agree upon that. So how Jesus is a prophet of God, yet he is sending disciples and making them messengers of God, unless he is God. Are you getting my point, guys? Are we getting the point? It's in the front of you. The same book saying Jesus is just a prophet is the same book confirming that Jesus sent messengers and those are messengers of God. And not only that, they made miracle, including resurrecting people from death. They brought for them a child who's dead and they resurrected him. And they made miracles nobody can count in the name of Jesus. The Quran witnessed to that. So how Jesus, in his name, people can do miracles. How Peter and Paul, and not only that, look, Paul and Simon Peter and John, or Yohanna in Arabic, they are the first two messengers, but they are not strong enough. So we string them by the third. And here we notice that look like God in Islam, he cannot make it perfect and work unless he sends the three messengers. And yet the Muslim in the same article saying Trinity, say no to Trinity. A trinity does not make sense. So, okay, what, what the point of sending three messengers? More power? More horsepower? 
Y3. So the more you discuss and the more you read about this stupid cult, you will find that this, this book is the most confusing, stupid ideas, including inside, contradicting each other. But you know, here you, know, you ask yourself, okay, when the Muslim, he made this article, is that because he's convinced with it or because it have to match with Muhammad words? In fact, it doesn't match with Muhammad words. It doesn't match with Islam. It doesn't match even with his belief, but he have to make an article fit in, uh, in, in a way to make Christianity look bad. Or it does not make sense so Jesus a prophet of God how you examine him to be prophet of God name for me a messenger who deliver a message so we have to examine his message so how you can confirm that Jesus oh, and by the way why you are saying Jesus should the Isa Isa this Isa what is his prophet which come to be true where where is the message? Where is the prophets of Isa? In the Quran, there is a twenty-five prophets mentioned by name. All of them we know nothing about them. Maybe except uh, Musa's, and the story of Musa's is stolen from the Bible, and it's full of stupidity, as it is coming in the Quran. As an example. Moses, in his time, he met with the the, the, the Samari, the Samartian. <laughs> so, they have a stupid book. They have a religion claiming that they believe in one God, yet they kiss stones. Claiming that God is one, he lives in heaven. Yet God who is in heaven, he cannot hear the Muslim prayer unless he come down every third part of the night. They believe that God is not a man, but their God, he says, that he looked like Adam. And even more farther, he looked like Jesus. If we go in the Quran, <clears throat> we will find this. I mean in the in the hadith, sorry. This is the description of Allah. And this is Sahih Hadith, as you see. So the Muslim cannot say this is fabricated, this is fake, this is it says the Prophet said, I have told you so much about the Dajjal, the Antichrist, that I am afraid that you may not understand. The end, and by the way, the Antichrist does not exist in this hadith. This is false translation. The Muslims do not even believe in something called Antichrist. What they believe in is al Masihu Dajjal, which is the false Messiah. And there's a huge difference between Antichrist and false Messiah. But what you can say to stupidity, I mean, how you change the, the Arabic word where it says the false Messiah, you make it Antichrist. Stupidity. Stupidity and confusion. Because the Muslim believe that there is a guy, he will come and he will claim to be the real Messiah, but he is a false Messiah. However, this real mess, false Messiah, he have a power. He can even order gold to come from the ground and will come back. He can cut a piece, a person by the sword, two pieces, and he can put him back together by one order. He can control the cloud. He can control the sky. He can control everything. So even here, they try to deceive you saying, oh, we believe in the Antichrist, which means Islam is not Antichrist religion, but Islam is Antichrist religion. So look, Allah supposedly describing himself to Muhammad. Muhammad is speaking about Allah and is speaking about the Dajjal. The Dajjal, the false messiah, the Dajjal, Dajjal in Arabic means the liar. The Dajjal is somebody, he's a scammer, like a scam. Which means he, 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 cannot, he cannot say one word is correct. That I am afraid that you may not understand the Antichrist is short, hinted, woolly haired, one eyed, and eye sightless, neither protruding nor deep seated. And if you are confused about him, know that your Lord, which means Allah, is not one eyed. Hold on. 
let me make this uh, maybe big. I don't know if we'll, we'll, we'll make it bigger in the screen, screen from your side. Why Allah describing himself to Muhammad that he look exactly as we see? Because the only difference between Allah and this false man is the one eye. So they, they, they speak day and night saying that Allah is not a man. Allah is not a man. But Muhammad himself is afraid that the Abdul will be confused about him. Him who? The Dajjal. And he's comparing him to the look of Allah. You see, this hadith should be as the following. That if you are confused about him, you should know that your Messiah is not one-eyed, not Allah. Which means in this hadith, Muhammad confirmed that the Lord and Jesus is one. Because remember, this, this man at the Dajjal, he will claim that he is the Messiah. He will not claim to be Allah. So why Muhammad is worried about him to be believed that he is Allah, especially about the look? Do you know what I mean? Do we have any Muslim here a comment? Anyone? Any Muslim have a comment about what we just said? How Muhammad describing Allah look that his look exactly the same as the fake Jesus. The only difference between them is the one eye, as you see in the screen. And by the way, why Allah have two eyes? What about having four? He will see better. You see, when we say that Allah have two eyes and his two eyes are perfectly working fine. That's mean Allah, he depend on eyes to see. And as long there are two eyes, that means he cannot see 360 degree. When Allah, he says, he is all seeing, all hearing, this is proven to be false. Because as you see, Allah have two eyes. Unless his eyes is not, is just a decoration. Like, you know, the Muslim, they say to us, how God, he came as in the image of a man. But Jesus is still, he can tell you, even according to the Quran, what you hide in your home, which means he do not need his eyes to see what you did at home. Can Allah do the same? Absolutely not. And we can prove it. Allah, he do not know how the baby to be created. He think that the sperm will transform into dead blood. He think, and he teach in the Quran, chapter 86, verse number 6 and 7, that women have a sperm and come in from their ribs, and men have a sperm coming from his backbone. So Allah not only do not see, Allah is blind. Allah not only is not educated, Allah is stupid, because this is a stupid teaching. If I go right now to a medical school, and I say to the professor, I discover that women, they have a sperm and their sperm is coming from their location of the necklace, not the ribs, the location of the necklace, which means almost their neck. Is he going to laugh at me or he will give me a, like a prize for being the most smart student? So Allah is not all knowing. Allah is all stupid. We go back to the article. Jesus a prophet. Jesus always referred to himself as having been sent by God, meaning that he was divine, a divine messenger. For instance, this is eternal life to know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Okay, hold on, hold on. Why you stop? Why, why you stop? So from, from John chapter 17, this is the only verse that makes sense to you in your religion? What about we read uh, verse before it and verses after it? Shall we? 
Let us go to John number 17 and show you how Muslims, they fabricate and they lie to make articles fit with their agenda. This is the Messiah speaking, John number 17. And remember in the article, they are quoting for us what? John 17 verse number three. Okay, well, I mean, what you will lose if you quote number one and two, you know? Let us see what you will lose. All right. You will see here that he says, he lifted his eyes into the heaven and said, my father, the hour has come. Glorify your son. That's it, Islam is destroyed. Jesus, he just said, there is a father and there is a son. Bingo. <laughs> Do you see it? That said, Jesus destroy, destroyed Islam in, in, in a few words. So this is why he did quote only verse number three, because he didn't want to quote for you that Jesus, he said that this is God is my father. Muslims, do you agree with John 17? Do you agree with Jesus saying that God is my father? So why you say Jesus refer always to himself as sent by God? But yes, he referred to himself that he sent by the father and he is his son. And look, not only that, that your son may glorify you just as you have given him authority over the flesh he will give eternal life to them why you don't want to quote this for us jesus glorified the father and he was given the authority over all the flesh all mankind he is not just he's not a prophet you know, by the way, God is a prophet himself because all prophecy is coming from God. You see, when we say a prophet, a prophet is somebody prophesy, which means God told him something to say to us, which means the first prophet is God. So Jesus the prophet, no problem. But Jesus the prophet have a authority over the flesh of all, which means all this universe is under the control of Jesus. Because you have given, given, given all things, whatsoever into him. But these things are eternal life. They shall know you, for you alone are the true God of the truth. So they quote only for us this verse here. That's it. This is the important one. He's talking about his father, my friend. And Jesus confirming that he is the one who have the authority. And then, Yeshua, the Messiah, whom you have sent. So the Messiah, he was sent by the Father. And what is the mission of the Messiah? To glorify the, the Father in the same time. The Father will glorify, glorify him, as we will see soon. In the same time, the Messiah have the authority all over. I have glorified you in earth. I have accomplished the work that you have given me to do. Now glorify me, my Father, in union with yourself, in that glory which I had in union with you before the universe was. I mean, how clear we need to make it that Jesus saying he exists before the universe is exist. How much Jesus need to claim that he is God, but more than saying there is a union. Do you see the liars, how we can get them busted? So when a Muslim, he make an article for you, always take into consideration that number one target is to fool you, not to quote the Bible, because the Bible doesn't say what they are saying. The Bible is not even the translation they post for you. And the Bible is not a verse. It is a Bible. It is a book of books. The chapter in front of us, actually from here to here, just from verse number one to verse number five, Islam is destroyed. 
From the first line, actually, Islam destroyed. Because Muslims do not believe in the Father. When a Muslim, he says, okay, Jesus says that you are the only true God. Well, but do you accept that he just said in the same line that he is the Son? Do you accept that he is the Father? Do we have any Muslim have any comment? Yeah, I can zoom in, but you see, I don't know how, how, how much the zoom will change. Again, forgive me, guys. I'm using a tablet here. I don't have uh, my computer. I'm still overseas. And I'm in an area where nobody speaks English. Each time I go to buy something, I have to use my fingers to explain. Uh, so, <clears throat> do we have any Abdul here to say something useful for us? Any Abdul? So look at the manipulation and how they fabricate meaning to make it fit with their agenda. And I want to remind you of something. In this article, which made by this Abdul here, I don't know what happened to my browser. Look like it's frozen. Oh, it's okay. It's working. Okay. In this here, he is quoting for us chapter John chapter seventeen, verse number three, and we show you that this is a fabrication, that Jesus in that confirmed that he is the one have the authority of God over all the flesh. Have you ever heard of a messenger, a man? He have authority over all the flesh. Which mean, actually, you know, we know that Jesus, he forgives sin. Isn't it Jesus, he said to him, your sin is forgiven? Who can forgive sin, my friend? God. Muhammad himself cannot forgive sin. Even Muhammad, he asked Allah to forgive the sin of his father and his mother. And supposedly Allah, he don't accept. John chapter 5 verse number 30 okay let us go to John chapter 5 verse number 30 I can of my own self do nothing as I hear I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will but the will of the father which has sent me <laughs> he just said that Jesus he said that he have God who is the father right isn't this the point you are trying to say to me that Jesus sent by God, and this God is the God of Jesus, but yet he is calling him the Father. If we go to John chapter 5, verse number 30, let us read what John says. And let us zoom in so you guys can read better. <clears throat> I can read. For you from the beginning but you can I mean John chapter 5 is very well known you can open it in your own but here you will see that Jesus in the same chapter saying to a person do you want to be cured the sick man answered yes oh my Lord did he say to him, oh, my Lord, there is no one to put me. As you see in the rest, you know, the man he is saying, like, I mean, who can, who can, who can cure me? I mean, look, you know, my situation is horrible. Nobody can cure me. Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was healed and he stood up, he took his bed and he walked. My friend, Allah sent to Muhammad a three time read. Still Muhammad, he cannot read. So let us compare between Jesus and Allah. 
Allah he squeezed Muhammad three times because supposedly the word of read is coming from Allah delivered by the angel remember that so it doesn't matter who say it it's Allah at the end of the day yes Muhammad never spoke to Allah never heard even the fart of Allah but yet Allah told the angel to say to Muhammad read and the angel he told the word of Allah three times Muhammad cannot read Jesus said to a man he cannot walk he spent most of his life he cannot walk stand up not only stand up stand up and walk the man he stand up he even he carried his bed and he walked and it was the Sabbath day and look here the Bible is concentrating that the story happened in the Sabbath not in the miracle I will explain to you why because Jesus he made too many miracles to even to count but this miracle, because it happened in the Sabbath, the story here is mentioned. And the Jews were saying to him who was healed, it, it is Sabbath, and you are not permitted to carry your bed because those people do not know what happened to this man. They saw him carrying the bed. But he answered and said to them, he who made me well, he permitted me to, to, to uh, <laughs> you know, the one who made me well, he permitted me to do that. Uh, he said to me, take up the bed and walk. And then they asked him, who is this man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But that, but that had been healed, did not know who is Yeshua was. This guy, you do not know is this guy. This man who did heal him, he did not know who's he. Oh, what he know that he, he's, he's so happy, he's so excited. A person, he made a miracle for him, and now he's not wary about carrying the bed in the Sabbath, which is forbidden by the Jews. And then, uh, after time, Yeshua found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you are well again. Do not sin. Lest something worse can uh, than before should happen to you. And that man departed and said to the Jews, that is him, which means that is Yeshua, was the one had healed who had healed him. And look what the Jews say. I have to read this, uh, you know, for you, because we are going to, uh, hold on. My screen is frozen. All right. I have to read this for you uh, for a very simple reason because here you will see something very important in the coming statement all right and that man departs say to the Jews we told him that this is this is the person who did the, uh, heal me. His name uh, now I just discovered his name is Yeshua. His name is Yeshua, not Asa. And because of this, the Jews were persecuting Yeshua because he's teaching against the, the the Sabbath. Because how you according to the Jews, how you teach somebody, how you do something in the Sabbath day, you cannot do that. And they were seeking to kill him. Because he did things in the Sabbath, but Yeshua himself said to them, My father is working until this hour, and I am also working. And look what happened. And I hope all the Abduls who read the yellow page of Muhammad, they will read the following sentence. And because of this, the Jews were especially seeking to kill him, not only because he broke the Sabbath, but also he said that God was his father and was making himself equal with God. Do you see it, Abdul? So you're asking me to go to chapter 5 to prove to me that Jesus, he never claimed to be God. But when we go to chapter 5 in the book of John, we find that Jesus the reason the Jews they want to kill him because he claimed that he is equal to God, which means he is saying he's God. 
Is that in the front of you or we are fabricating? And yet you will find that Abdul coming to you and says, where Jesus is, I'm God. Show me one verse. I trained you to tell me one verse where Jesus said, I am God worth of me. You will not find one verse in the Bible. It said, Jesus said, I'm God worth of me. The whole Bible saying that, my friend. From, from verse number one in the book of John to the rest of the Bible, it says Jesus saying, I'm God. Liars, liars will end in fire. So here they say to you, okay, Jesus says the son cannot do anything of his own, but the thing that he sees the father is doing. But look, Jesus, he just said, <laughs> he do the same as the father. <laughs> or what Jesus saying to them that, yes, I am a man. I have the flesh of a man, but I have the authority of God. So the man of front of front of you is just a flesh, flesh of a man. He can do nothing. But God in the man, you see, is the one who is doing that. This is why the Bible says that Jesus, the Messiah, is the visible image of the invisible God, which means the flesh is the visible image of God because God is invisible and nobody even can see him with his real glory and live unless the God he wanted that so they lie to us and they say nowhere it says and they quote for us a chapter and if you are a naive if you are an, a person who don't read educate yourself about Christianity or they say you are a Christian by name, you can be fooled by those articles. Actually, I just searched about Jesus. I found the first site in Google coming as ad. It was by Muslims saying that Jesus is a prophet. So imagine how much money they are spending just to promote the idea that Jesus is just a prophet. And what is the prophecy of Jesus in the Quran? That there's a prophet will come after me, his name is Ahmed. But your prophet, his name is not Ahmad. Is his name is Ahmad or Muhammad? And how, how a man, his name is Muhammad, he is a prophet. Because Muhammad means the praised one. So if Muhammad is a prophet who believe in a God, his name is Allah. How he accept to call himself such a name, which means God. Because Muhammad means God. Muhammad means God. When you call yourself Muhammad, you are saying, I'm God, the praised one. I thought the praised one is God. No, the praised one is Muhammad in Islam. Allah is not the praised one. It's Muhammad. This is why you see the Muslims, they have Muhammad. He fabricated many verses saying that God said to him that Allah and the angels and the Muslims and everybody praying on Muhammad. Or he is the center of the universe do we have any muslim here have a comment no we do not need to read the peter and we know we we will go with the article just to get them busted from the article you know what i mean the article they are quoting for us itself is a proof that they are fab, you know they are a fraud because those those verses the one they quote for us they are proving that jesus is divine and he is god the same chapters they are quoting for us is the same ones proving to us that jesus is god and look what jesus keeps saying jesus in the same chapter the muslim they choose for us Continue talking, saying the following. For the father loves the son, his uh, uh, the, his son. Is Jesus now confirming that he is son of God? Yes. And show him everything he does. Greater deeds, th these who he will show him. That you may be astonished. You will be astonished by what Jesus can do too. 
For just as the Father raises the dead and giving, give, gives them life, thus also the Son gives lives to, the, to, to them whom he will. Whom he will. And here this is very important. So Jesus in full control of giving life. He is a creator. The same as the Father, he gave life. The son he do the same he give life if we ask the Muslims who give life they will say only God so how you say to me Jesus never said I'm God he just said I give life the same chapter you are asking me to read it from to prove to me that Jesus is not God it says that Jesus is God and he give life the same as the father let us let us change the word father and make it fit with the with the with the with the propaganda of the Muslim. So if we switch this word from father to God, here, and let us assume Jesus saying, just to show you how how the Muslim they, they go blind they don't want to see. For just that as the God forget now we will not say the father. Just to make it fit with the Muslim mentality. For just as the God raises the dead and giving them life, also Jesus gives life. Do you see it? <laughs> and this idiot who made this article, he is asking us to read John 5. And he quote for us a verse. Do you see it? So every chapter of the Muslim they quote for us, proving the opposite that Jesus is God and Muhammad is an idiot. Look what Jesus said. That everyone should honor the son, not like Muhammad, he tried to humiliate Jesus. By claiming that he is going to have his mother in the bed. Imagine how filthy this man is. Even Mary, the mother of Jesus, he claimed that Allah will give him Mary as a gift for sex. It's not enough all the women he have. He wants the women she was exist more than 600 years before him. And she was the mother of Jesus. You see how much Muhammad he respects Jesus? So that everyone should honor the son as one honor the father the honor of the son is equal to the honor of the father what does that mean imagine that you see imagine if i say to you you should honor me the same as you honor god well isn't it obvious i'm saying to you i'm god hmm Guys, let us not to talk to this uh, chunk and please don't call him names. Let, let that guy alone. He's a poor guy. Be easy. Be easy in text. You know, I cannot really control the text. Don't, for, don't force me to block people saying there's no need. Then leave that guy alone. He's a Muslim. This is a guy. He believed that the black stone have two eyes and when he kiss it, it's going to suck his sin. I mean, f f feel for him. Put yourself in his shoe standing in front of a, of a black stone in the shape of a private part of a woman and he put his head inside and then he kiss it and then after that he feel comfortable because the black stone will suck his sin and by the way this black stone used to be white like milk and because of his sin it became a black feel for him please this guy he believe he will go to heaven and his god will make his a private part in this that is not a reward that is a penalty Especially your private part is in the front of you. It's not like a tail. You can drag it behind you. How you can walk with this private part if it's endless? Are you going to put it in the railway train, station, railway? 
You will be in China and your private part in New York. It's endless. I mean, do you want to know where it where it where it's going? Where where your private pri private part now? It's endless. This is what Islam and this they want to they want to convince us that we should convert to Islam. Brother, convert to Islam. We believe in one God. Who cares if your God is one or two? He's an idiot. If your God is one or two or three or four, that is not the issue. Let us go back to the article. And then this Abdul here, he quote for us, Lou. I mean, we just showed you we do not need really to go all over. The Son of God, true meaning. It's true that in Luke 132, he is called the Son of the Highest, and in 135, the Son of God. But this expression in the biblical uh, 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 item do not at all uh, cannot divinity or partnership. And look, look at the stupidity. Look at the stupidity. The Quran, the Quran says that Allah have no children. And Jesus said that he is and his father are equal in honor. And whatever the father he can do, he can do himself. So it's not about just calling him a father. He is saying that the father, he glorify him. The father does not glorify any man. For all men are sinners. All men should glorify God. But the father, he glorified the son, the same as the son glorified the father. So here, try they try to manipulate, says, the word father does not mean anything, have to do that he is God. Okay, let me ask you a question. Why Muhammad said that Allah is his father? As long this is the story, and this does not mean he is a divine. What about Muhammad saying, Allah is my father? So all the story here is just to make you believe in something is not meant because the whole Bible saying from the verse, if we go to John, in the beginning it was the word and the word was with God and the word was the God. And then in verse number 14 it says, and the word became a flesh. So it's not just saying the father, it's not just saying the son, is that the son he glorified the Father, the Father glorified the Son, and the Son, he can do what the Father do. And he have authority over all the flesh. And even in the Quran, Jesus can create from the mud a bird. So he's a creator. Otherwise, I can call myself a son of, fa of the Father. I can say I am God too. I mean, who cares what you say? Anyone can say he's God. The problem is, can you do what God do? When Jesus forgave sin, did he forgive sin or he was lying? So if you want to say to me that you accept what the Bible is saying, then you accept what Jesus is doing too. And Jesus forgiving sin. Jesus promised people to be in heaven. And he forgave them sin. If you read the whole article, which is nothing but a fabrication, you will not find any place where the Muslim is speaking about the claim that Mary was virgin. Anyone knows why? Why the Muslim did not make fun of the Christians believing in Mary to be virgin? Why they are talking about Jesus being the son? Why they are talking about the father trying to make it give it different meaning? Why they are not making fun of the Christians believe that Jesus was born of a virgin because the Quran says so That's it. So not because it's convincing Not because it is logical Because Jesus is born of a virgin in Islam has no logic. I Changed a Muslim to tell me why What is the purpose of this miracle? Nothing? In Islam, in Christianity, it does make sense. For he is a son of God, for he is divine, he is not born of any sexual relationship. 
He is born of a pure woman and he is a pure son as Quran chapter 19 verse number 19 says He is the holy son That makes sense He is a son of no man That is Jesus You see Adam is a son of no man, but that makes sense because simply he is the first man so how he can be the son of anyone but anyone after adam is a son of adam except jesus and if we ask the muslim the muhammadan why jesus is a son of no man what is the purpose out of all the billions of a human being who they are born and those who died why only one person is born of a woman but yet he have no father what the purpose of this? They have no answer. Because Islam is nothing but a cult. It's a collection of belief. Jesus distinct from God. And here you notice that you are trying to uh, say to you, well, Jesus is distinct from God. So how he can be God at the same time? And here you notice that the Muslims, when they want, they use the word the Father. When they want, they remember the word God. Why did not say Jesus distinct from the Father? Why you are saying God now? And look what they quote for us. For we are circum uh, uh, the circumcision, which worship God. In the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh but look what the Muslim they just did they just agreed that God has a spirit and the God of Islam has no spirit which means the God of Islam he cannot be the God of Abraham and even if you want to say to me that Jesus, he have God, that God cannot be the God of Muhammad because the God of Christians and the Jews, he is a spirit. This is why we call it the Holy Spirit. The Muslim, even that they corrupt and they say the Holy Spirit is Jibreel, where nowhere in the Quran it says that Muhammad, he said in the Quran from his God, that Jibreel is a spirit. Actually, that can be debunked very easy from the Quran because the Quran says that the day of judgment where the spirit and the angels will stand in front of Allah. So how can be Jibreel a spirit? He is not. And how he can be called holy when he is not? Because according to Islam, Jibreel and all the angels, they commit sin against Adam when they accuse him that he will do bloodshed. Do we have any Muslim here have anything to say? Muslims, is your God Allah a spirit? The answer, no. That's it. We are done. Islam is false. Islam cannot be the same God of the Jews, neither the same God of Abraham, neither the same God of the Christians, because from the first books of, you know, go to the book of Genesis, you will see that God created the whole world and his spirit was above the water. His spirit. God is a spirit. Bingo. And here we notice that the God of Islam who have a physical being but yet he is not a spirit, he must be an idol. Because how you are a physical being, but yet you don't have a spirit, what does that mean? A toy, Barbie? Concrete? Allah has no spirit. Who is a Muslim want to tell me how Allah can be alive, but yet he have no spirit? Yet he is a physical being. Any Muslim want to tell us? Anyone? 
how Allah is alive you know when when they ask Muhammad let me show you something silly in this cult <clears throat> they asked Muhammad about the spirit Muhammad he went home and he started taking the freeze from his head he spent there three four five weeks and then those people they insist they want to know what is the spirit and Muhammad had to give an answer and look at the answer try not to laugh Allah told Muhammad what is the spirit and they ask you about the spirit say the spirit belong to the domain of my Lord Abdul they are not asking you belong to who we are asking you what is the spirit have you ever heard of a stupid question like this so imagine I claim to be a prophet and then you ask me what is the spirit I go for five six weeks playing with my nose cleaning all the boogers coming coming out and collecting them as a stamp to send them in the museum one day and then I come back to you says God just told me brother and tutor God told me that the spirit is from the command of Allah Look, what what does have to do with the question they are asking you what is the spirit what is what what is the word the spirit mean command of Allah command of who, who can, this is not the question But because you have no question, you have no answer. I don't know. The same as when they ask him, the Muhammad, about Zul Qurnayn. You, know, you remember the story of Zul Qurnayn, right? They ask him about Zul Qurnayn. Muhammad, he did not answer them right away because he have to do some search in Google. <laughs> so. Uh, <clears throat> In chapter 18 verse number 83 you, you notice here that all of those are answers for questions Muhammad he was which mean Muhammad was forced to speak about it and by by talking about it he got himself busted and they ask you about the Quran say I will tell you something about him okay hold on hold on who is who, who's first this guy his name is the Quran have you ever heard that there's a God he named a man. His name is the guy with the two horn. Who, who is this guy? Zul Qurnayn. This this what Arabic mean? Zu, which mean with. Al Qurnayn, the horn, the guy with the horn. Who is this guy? And supposedly you are solving the mystery now. You told us Al Qurnayn, so now we have to start guessing. And then the Muslim is covered. They start guessing who is this guy. And then many of them, they come to the conclusion, this is Alexander the Great. And look at the story. They say that Zulqarnayn, Allah sent him as a messenger to his people. And when he told them to convert to Islam, they hit him in his head with the hammer. And this is how he got the first horn and he died. And then al Bradad he resurrected him. And then he sent him again to tell his people to convert to Islam. And they hit him in the other side of his head and he got the second horn and died. I mean, can you believe it? Those people want to tell us about Jesus. And then Zulqarnayn, he is a messenger of Allah. Alexander the Great is a bisexual person. We established for him an earth. So Allah gave him power. And we gave him from all kinds of means, Allah sponsored him. And then this guy, just to make the story short, he keep going until he reached where the sun is setting. And he found it sitting in murky spring of water. Allah now is telling us history that there's a guy, his name is Zulqarnayn. He found the sun sitting in a swimming pool, not ocean. You see, the Muslim, you try to fool you, says, here it says, that Zulkarnain, he thought the sun sitting in them. It doesn't say that, Abdul. And by the way, if Zulkarnain, he thought, why Allah, he didn't say, so Zulkarnain, he thought, he did not say he, he, he thought. He said, and then he found it. 
Allah is reporting a find and find which mean a fact when I say this guy he went to his house and he found his cat hungry that's mean he found a fact not a fiction you don't say he found it unless it is a find a fact and by the way even even your prophet the prophet of the Muhammad and the Abdul the biggest Abdul he got you busted in that so he explained this verse because I know money Muslims they try to fabricate the meaning and say oh it doesn't say that uh, this is uh, how it appeared for him huh uh, here we go this is your prophet is explaining the, the the verse in the Quran I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah who was riding a donkey while the sun was sitting he asked do you know? Do you know where this set? I wish I have a, a video camera at that time. I mean, that will be the most amazing mo movie. Do you know? You know, when Muhammad, he said, do you know? That means he is showing you. He's a, it's a show time. It's a show time. He want to show off that he knew. And the rest, they are ignorant. I mean, come on, I am Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. Allah himself, he wrote my name in his chair. Allah, he spent the whole time writing the name of Muhammad. Allah is a graffiti scammer. He should be arrested by the police. In his chair, Allah, after he made the chair, he started writing the name of Muhammad. Hmm. Brother, did you see Christian Prince name written somewhere? Only Muhammad? So the messenger of Allah said, do you know where this set? The guy, he have, he knew that Muhammad, this guy, by the way, the, the guy who go with him, Abu Dhar and Abu Huraira, they go with Muhammad just to eat for free. And I can show you the reference. Here he said, I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. That's it. And the funny, the Muslim, they say to us that you are mushrikeen because we associate the name of Jesus with the name of God. It's you Muslims who do that. You associate the name of Muhammad with the name of your God, Shahada. You associate the knowledge of your God with the knowledge of a man. And you're claiming that both of them, they know best. Mushrikeen, Kuffar, pagans. For us, Jesus is God. We are not associating God with God. And then I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. And now you can see that Muhammad like... <laughs> He said, feel so good, like, yeah, yes, it's me, I know best. He said, it's set in a spring of warm water, Hamia. Hamia, your head is Hamia. Hamia means boiling hot. Do you see that? Here we go, that we just discovered that Muhammad must be a prophet of God. Otherwise, how he knew that? The Quran confirmed and Muhammad confirmed in the Hadith that the sun set in a swimming pool. And that is called today in the world today jacuzzi so what the Quran saying to us that Allah he found that the Sun set in jacuzzi how you how you cannot believe in the Prophet and he's a prophet look at this he must be a prophet of God jacuzzi for every citizen Hmm? Is it me saying that? or And the funny they say to you that a brother, a brother, it appeared it appear to this guy that he saw it uh, uh, in uh, uh, because it was sitting in the ocean, brother, and he thought that it is the sun sitting there. Abdul, first, it doesn't say ocean. Secondly, it says murky spring of water. Spring. It is a little tiny place, not ocean. So why you fabricate a story? What is the ocean? Is the ocean a murky spring? Have you ever heard of an ocean called murky spring? Where we can find this murky spring ocean? So this is Muhammad, is the one who want to tell you who is Jesus? The guy who you think Actually, this guy don't even remember which one Allah created first. 
in one chapter in the Quran he says Allah created the trees and the grass first and then he created the Sun the stars and the other chapter he said the opposite any Abdul have a comment we have we have almost 900 people watching and not even a, uh, not even one Abdul have a comment to say this is the guy when I tell us about Jesus what Jesus is actually the chapter 18 I found it the most entertaining chapter ever I mean this guy not only he found where the Sun set he found where the Sun rise <laughs> the guy he changed direction then he pursued a course he took different highway and then he kept going keep going keep going keep going until when he reached the rising of the Sun that what the heck you reach the rising of the Sun you must be kidding me how you can do that there's a place where the Sun rising and there's a place where the Sun sitting this guy he reached the two side of the earth where the Sun set in the murky water in a spring of murky water and the Sun rising in a place and he found next to it people he found what people and those people brother they have a problem brother with the problem brother there is a nation it's called Gog and Magog Gog and Magog is different level of stupidity they are not a human their ears they sleep inside their ears their, their their right ear is big like a tent so when they want to sleep they sleep inside it every one of Gog and Magog he will have 1,000 baby which will grow so fast to be adult before he die which mean the ratio of mankind to Gog and Magog is 1 to 1,000 so if we are 7 billion Gog and Magog now should be 7 uh, there will be 700 billion no sorry 7,000 billion where are they and Allah when he arrived there brother those people they asked Zulkarnain to build a dam he built a dam between two mountains so Gog and Magog cannot go through brother this is the guy when I tell me about Jesus where we can find this dam and where we can find those billions trillions of people who they cannot be found Gog and Magog so the Muslims are busy about what the father mean the Muslims are busy where Jesus says I am God worship me the Muslim busy saying Jesus he said there is only one true God but the Muslims are not busy about the stupidity in their book where we can find the people of Gog and Magog guys I'm looking from the window I see someone walking down street he look weird do you think he's from Gog or he's from Magog Mayday, Mayday, Gog and Magog, do you hear me? Mayday, Mayday. Anyone from Gog and Magog? If you know, if you hear me, please give me a sign. Uh, this is not, sorry guys, this is not from Gog and Magog. This is my cousin. He look weird. I thought, I thought this is Gog and Magog. I mean, he's really look weird. Yeah, he looked like sometimes like Gog and Magog somehow. We have to admit. Any Abdul? Muslim revert look and look at the names they choose Muslim revert what revert to what you don't worship the same God how you can saw yourself revert that is another deception the Muslims they play uh, first of all they lie they claim that they are converted and then they fabricate the name and they say reverted reverted to who to the God who will make your private endless if we have the same God, shouldn't we have the same heaven? If we have the same God, your God is not a spirit. Our God is a spirit. So don't say reverted. Reverted to what? Maybe perverted. Because 
You are believing in a God just for the sake of sexuality, being drunk, drinking whiskey and black label, and non-stop sex. None of the Muslims really believe in God. They believe in their private part. Because the whole purpose of Islam is just sexual religion. Go and get my book, Sex and Allah, and you will see the madness. Right? Who want to answer us? Where do we can find the people of Gog and Magog who they are, their ratio of numbers, 1,000 to 1, which means we should have 7,000 billion of Gog and Magog right in this earth. Where do we can find them? <clears throat> Muslim Revert is saying to us, look at the hate here. Thank you, Mr. Revert. Are you against hate? I like that, actually. I like it when a Muslim, he says against hate. We are against hate, too, but you are not. The second you convert to Islam, you believe in hate. And this is your Quran saying that Allah is the vendor of hate and he will target the Christians and he will make them full of hate. So how you are saying, look at the hate in here, yet you believe in the God who is the one who will provide the Christian with hate. And from those who we, who say we are a Christian, we receive their pledge and they neglected some of what they've been reminded of. So we provoke enmity and hatred among them until the day of resurrection. Do you see it? Are you against hate? We are. We are the one who follow Jesus, who says, love your enemy. Who are you to teach us about hate and love? You are the one who follow a person who split the women to pieces just because he is angry from her speaking against him. Is it true that your prophet, he put nails in the eyes of his enemies? Torturing people? And you are giving us a speeches about hate and love? Why Allah want to spread hate between the Christians? By the way, if you don't like this translation, I can change it for you. I can find different Abdul. Which Abdul is your favorite? Text English, Eitan, Allah, I don't know what is that. This is just in. Where is the English translation? Al Baghdadi, Mududi, uh, Yusuf Ali. Hey, I choose for you this idiot. I hope you accept him. Okay? Okay, Yusuf Ali, brother. Well, did not change. We choose Yusuf Ali, it's still not Yusuf Ali. I think I have to. Uh, I like it when a Muslim he school us about love and hate. Look who is talking. So what do you think about your God who wanna provide the Christians with hatred? Which means if you are saying there is hatred here, that's mean Allah is the reason. Allah is Satan. Who is the one who provide hate and ignite hate between people? Satan. That is Allah. So while Jesus was busy teaching his followers to love their enemy, pray for them and forgive those who curse you. Muhammad was busy cursing people, claiming that his God will spread the hatred and enmity between the Christians. Isn't this is the devil? Are you against hate, Mr. Muslim? Muslim revert, you want to call me? Well, right now I am abroad, so I cannot use really my Skype to call you. But you can call me as soon as I get back home. I will be there soon. But what about your answer here? Are you against hate? If you are truthful, say, yes, I am against hate and I'm against this verse. Because if the Christians are lost and Allah, he provide them with hatred, that will not make them better, that will make them worse. I thought the message of Allah is to guide people. But as you see, Allah is not the person who want to guide. 
Allah is a person who wants to spread hatred. Yeah, he will say to us that this verse is da'if. You are following a God who says, take not Christians and Jews as a friend. Chapter 5, verse number 4, 51. Is that because you love the Christians and God taught you, your God teach you to love the Christians or because he taught you to, love, to hate them? This is hate. Take not Christians and Jews as a friend. So what they are, they are enemies. Are you against hate, Mr. Abdul? You are a false person, like your prophet. Because if you are really truthful and you are against hatred, you should say this is nothing but hatred will divide mankind and will not make us to solve our problems because I have no problem to take a Muslim as a friend. Why not? I will take him as a friend. What the problem? I, if I have a Muslim next door and he needs my help, I will help him. Actually, I help many Muslims, many places. If I see a Muslim woman in the bus, and I did that actually already, like last, last trip, this time I did not see any. Last trip, I saw twice Muslim women in the bus. I'd give them my chair. Once actually, once in the bus, and once in the bus station, in the in the in the bus station, people waiting for the the buses. An old woman, she is a Muslim. You can tell her from her clothes. There is no place to sit, and the rain was coming like crazy. I stood. I give her my chair. Why? Because she is like my mother. So what? She is. She is a Muslim, and Jesus taught me to be good to everybody. But your God saying, take not Christians and Jews and the friends. Even Quran chapter 9, verse number 23 says, you cannot take even your father and your brother as a friend. Let us go there. Chapter 9, verse number 23. Even your own family, you have to hate them because of this stupid cult. Do you see it? Are you still against hate? Obviously, you are not against hate. You support hate because you converted this religion according to you, if you are truthful. And by the way, all the Muslims, they come to my chat, they claim to be the Mother Teresa. They used to be a Catholic and they became a Muslim brother. All of them, they used to be Catholic brother. Even the Muslim ones, they came to chat room. Uh, actually, I came, I came to their chat room, and the chat room was really big. You know, like now we have 918. But there, there, it was even bigger. So I wrote in the text. I said, "Brother, Alhamdulillah, today, the the Pope and his mother-in-law, uh, and and his third wife who, who uh, so you no, know, his third wife and his mother-in-law who passed last year, passed away last year. They converted to Islam today." You should see the room go crazy. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Brother, stop, brother, brother, brother. Brother, stop the text, brother. Stop the text, brother. Wait, wait, wait. What, the, what, this, what this brother they're saying? The 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 uh, uh, the third wife, uh, second wife, third wife of the Pope and his mother-in-law who passed last year converted to Islam today. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. Allah. And the text was going crazy. Just say to them anything. Stupid cult. And then they start saying to him how the Pope have third wife. I, brother, hello, brother, but Pope is not married. And how he's saying that his mother, she in law, she passed last year, passed away last year, she converted to Islam today. Madness, stupidity. The goat converted to Islam. The dog, he says shahada. The cat pray to Allah. He, even trees, they are bending to Allah. Even rocks, they say, Assalamu alaikum to Muhammad. Too much hashish. Too much hashish, yet Muhammad have no miracles. What Muhammad miracle? He split the moon, brother. The brother, but the moon is there. It's not split, trust me. The moon is not only there, it's big and beautiful. Mike <laughs> <Huh? laughs> uh. cannot change the topic. Uh, what love in infidelity to spouse? What does this have to do with our topic, my friend? Focus, focus with us. Focus on the topic. So Muslims, 
Muslim people, Abbas, Abbas, uh, quote Psalm 68, where God crushed the heads of the enemy. Okay, and <laughs> God hate the sinner. So what is the problem? Because God, he hates sin. You see the silly and the stupidity. Uh, God in Islam, he hate those who don't worship him. God in Islam, he hate those who kill. Right? This is what the Muslims say. They hate, he hate those who kill. But the fact that God of Islam, he love those who do jihad and kill. So, very stupid, very silly. And there's a huge difference between saying that God hate uh, uh, sin and saying to me, I hate sin too. Nothing wrong with that. I hate hate. But hate is exist. But hate what? I hate not to help you. I hate that I cannot help you. I hate that I don't have if enough money to provide to you. You have a son, you want to give him, the, you send him to school. You say to him, I hate not to be able to help your son. Hate have many meaning. But in Islam, this is hate between mankind for no reason. Your father and your family, Christians and Jews, the God of hate. And in the same time, as long as you are talking about this, let us go here a little bit so we can love together. <clears throat> In the Quran, we see that Allah is the God of deception and that because of his hate. Read carefully first. In chapter 4, verse number 60, it says that the one who deceive you is shaitan. You see the word yudullahum? It's highlighted in, 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 a, in a black. It is, let us highlight this thing here. You see it? The same word just to show you the deception of Muslims and then the same word appear in chapter 4 verse 113 if we go to translate the word let us see a translation uh -huh. hold on All right. So what what uh, he will lead them astray. Do Allah lead people astray? Shaitan, he lead you astray. Do you see it? But Satan's wish is to lead them astray. By the way, the translation is not accurate because the word you dull not only lead them astray is to deceive them. Let us go back to the Quran. So Shaitan lead you astray. Who else? Allah. Chapter 4, verse 143, the same chapter. The one who Allah deceive him, nobody can guide him. Do you see it? The one who Allah deceive him, there's no guidance for him. Shaitan and Allah do the same action. Shaitan, he wished to lead you astray. Allah, he lead you astray. But mean shaitan is a wish. Allah, he do it. Which mean Allah is more evil than shaitan. Let us continue. <clears throat> Chapter 9, verse 115. Look at this verse and, and die laughing. Allah will not mislead a people after he has guided them. <laughs> Anyone knows what the problem with this? How many problems we have in this verse? Isn't it the Quran says, that those who they are, they, they converted to Islam and they left Islam, let them die in kuffar. 
And isn't it the Quran says that all everything is in the hand of Allah? And isn't it the Quran says Allah only is the one who guide and he is the one who must guide? So how this verse says, and Allah will not mislead a people after he has guided them. And here he is saying in the same time that Allah misguide people, but he will not mislead his people. Do you see it? Allah is a misleader. Allah is deceiver. And by the way, translation here is not correct because it's not mislead, it's deceive. But this is a contradiction for many verses in the Quran. Because only Allah who guide and only Allah who misguide supposed to, right? Okay, so how somebody leave Islam then? How somebody convert to Islam guided by Allah, then he leave Islam. Do you understand people? Stupidity. Look at this verse. This is a disaster. I look at the false translation. Woman Translation is absolutely false. To such as Allah reject from his guidance, there is no there's there can be no guide. That's how it's let's, let us change the translator and see how translation changed just to show you the corruption of the Islamic Abdul propaganda. Big tal. Let us see big tal. Brother Big Tal. Hmm. Do you see guys how the word change? Those whom Allah sent astray, there's no guide for them. He leave them to wander blindly on their look. What, 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 what? So Allah is the one who must guide, and Allah is the one who guide. But remember, just we showed you a verse saying that the one who Allah guide, Allah will not mislead them again. So what is the war of apostate? What is the millions of Muslims leave Islam? What is that? Allah will not misguide those who he guide. And here says, and those who Allah send astray, Allah will never guide them. So why he sent his messenger? <laughs> Guys, Allah, he sent his messenger to guide the misguided or to guide the one is guided. <laughs> Just to make it simple for you. Jesus said, I came to the, to the sick, not to the healthy. Right? He came to the, to the sick one. That makes sense. Allah, he is sick and he want to make us sick. And he, the one who Allah make him sick, no guidance for him. But look at this. All the Muslims who joined Muhammad in Islam, they used to be against him. So at that point, who is the one misguide them? Allah. The Muslims agree that everything happened by the will of Allah. Everything. And the Quran confirmed that. The Quran saying, <clears throat> chapter 60, 64, verse number one. Chapter 57, verse number 22. Confirming that all bad things happen to mankind, happen by Allah. Do you see it? Anything. So what does this mean? That's Allah, he guide not those who he misguide them. And why Allah is guiding them? Isn't it the purpose of Allah sending his prophets to guide people or to misguide? And why Allah, everything in his hand, yet he is the one who decides who will be guided and who is going to be misguided? To make it simple for you, Muhammad, he make it more clear. 
Muhammad he claimed that you don't believe in Allah which means your, your, your belief is not exist Allah he choose your destiny if we go here let us see uh, Here is a story about a child who died as an infant and I actually thought that this child he will go to heaven because he commit no sin and he never reached the age of sin Muhammad he told her shut up Aisha go into heaven and hell is not because you commit sin it's because of a destiny Allah he made for you so all this the the, the the story of converting, praying, it's a stupid because Allah, he decides for you according to Islam before you are born. And this is the proof in front of you. Aisha, she believed the same as the Christian, that a child who is born, he commit no sin. Jesus said, let the, let, let the little one come to me. And if you don't become like them, you will not enter the kingdom of my father. All the messengers, she said to him, after attending a funeral of a Muslim child, he is a child, infant, of a Muslim family, Al-Ansar. Allah messenger, there is a happiness for this child who is a bird from the birds of paradise. He commit no sin, nor has reached the age when one can commit sin. He said, Aisha, bear adventure. It may be the otherwise Aisha, because God created for paradise Aisha who are fit for it while they were in their father lions, which means backbone. And he created for hell those who they are going to hell where they are in their father backbone. So it doesn't matter if this child he made sin or, or not. He might go to hell still because Islam is a stupid religion. When Allah, he created you, he decide where you will go. So it doesn't matter you commit sin or not, you believe or not, you became a Muslim or a Christian, became Hindu or a Jew, it doesn't matter, Allah decides for you before you go. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion more than this? So why are you converted to Islam? Allah already decided to you where you go. Converting will not change anything. Leaving Islam will not change anything. Do you see it? Do we have any Muslim ever coming? So Islam as a, as a cult is a stupid cult. It's full of contradiction. One verse in the Quran says those who do good deeds, they have no fear, they will go to heaven. And then he says to us that it's not about committing sin. In different hadith Muhammad, he says, <clears throat> uh, That there is a Muslim who do the act of people of heaven all his life. And then, brother, almost when he is going to go to heaven, Allah, let's find the hadith. Uh, I'm trying to remember the hadith. How does it come in the translation? Anyway, just to make it short, I, I mentioned it many times before, that you are almost going to go to heaven and you are almost in the door of Allah and then what is written by Allah for you will take over and he will go to hell you believe it so your work will not come <clears throat> God he loved those who loves him that's stupid of you my friend 
uh, to say because you are just saying it's it's wrong to love those who loves you what's wrong with that in the same time the bible says that for god he loved the whole world he sent his only begotten son he loved the whole world to save them you are a fool keep, keep driving keep driving your car uh, and look how they try to change the topic. You know, this guy is just uh, trying to find something. God, he loved those who love him. Okay, are you saying this is wrong? Because I can show you the same in the Quran. You're stupid. You're stupid. You want to show you the Quran there? The same verse. Muhammad is copying it from the Old Testament, which is in the Quran. But what you can say to an ignorant? Stupidity is a sign of intelligence these days. They give you a, they give you a job to deliver pizza. You think you are, you are, a, you are a professor now. You buy a smartphone and you search Google and then you find yourself a genius. Uh, look at this. Even the sin of Adam, according to Islam, was a sin of Allah. Read it. All those hadith are sahih. Allah, he decided the sin of Adam 40 years before his creation. Do you see it? In different hadith it says 40 years before his creation. So Moses was saying to Adam, because of you we are out of heaven. Moses says to Adam, he says to Moses, are you stupid or what? Are you Abbas or what? Seriously, are you Abbas or what? Are you driving now or what? Don't you know that Allah, he, 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 wrote, he wrote my fate, which means he will commit sin 40 years before he created me. So Adam, the poor Adam, he was not a bad person. It was Allah, he wrote in his fate that he would do this. It's a scenario written by Allah. And the poor Adam, he did exactly what Allah, he wanted him to do. <coughs> You see it? At Alumani, at Alumani, do you do you blame me for what Allah wrote for me 40 years before my creation? Which means can you blame me? We cannot blame Adam for his sin. This is what the what this is what the story is saying. So Muhammad is saying to us that all the sin we do is something written, it's a destiny, it's not a choice, it's not because you're bad or good. No, that had nothing to do with you being bad or good. Read it. Here we go. Despite this, you blame me for an act which Allah has ordained for me 40 years before he created me. And then Muhammad, <laughs> he took the side of Adam and he says, this is how Adam won the debate. So Adam's sin is not the sin of Adam. My sin is not my sin. Islam is a stupid cult. Let me show you one more before we finish for today. When you commit adultery, commit sin of adultery, every human being is a sinner. Oh, we ask God for forgiveness. But Islam is a different story. Look what the cult of Islam teach. That when you commit adultery, it's Allah who wrote for you how much adultery you will do, and you will do exactly. Read it. Adultery in Islam is not an act of a man, it's an act of God. It's God who made you commit adultery. So if you see a woman and you sleep with her, not because you get horny and you could not control yourself and she could not control herself, no. But because Allah, he wrote your fate and her fate. Read carefully. Verily Allah had, has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge. Okay, what does that mean? Fixed portion, that's it. Allah, he wrote for you. Which means you cannot change it. You cannot be decent. You can't be good. You have to do it. And then, and which is he of necessity must commit. Do you see it? Allah wrote for you adultery portion which you must 
commit. Have you ever heard of a stupid cult more than this? So when you commit adultery in Islam, you are not adulterous. Allah is the adulteress. Allah is the devil. You can blame Allah from now for all the sin you do. So why you are stoning the women for committing adultery, Abdul? If Allah is the one who wrote the necessity to commit. <laughs> oh boy. Somebody saying cherry picking with what context my friend what a cherry put even this one cherry i mean this is a hadith this is the whole story what i will cherry like i'm not taking a verse out of a verses this is the story this is your teaching of your prophet tell me how we are taking the words out of their context tell me explain to us Al verily allah had has fixed the very portion of adultery do you see it who is the one who fixed it you, your god which a man will do. I mean, is even this one we are taking out of context? How is that? And which he of necessity must commit. And like, and then you see Abdul saying, Oh, he is taking it out of context with that. Madness, stupidity. We say to him, it's a goat, he say it's a bird. We say it's a goat, we say it's a bird. He say it's a goat, we say it's a bird. Okay, we switch. I say it's a bird, he say it's a goat. We say it's a bird, he say it's a goat. We say it's a bird, he say it's a goat. And then the bird fly, still he say it's a goat. It's a fly, it's a goat. It's a fly, it's a goat. I swear by Allah, this is a goat, it's not a bird. But Zakir Naik, just how it's goat and did the fly. This is a religion. And then they, they bring me Zach and Nike. Supposedly they refute me. And the guy always lied. And he made me think of the story. Another example. If you go in the book of the Heel Bukhari, the Heel Muslim, Hadith number 265, the Hadith number 265, the Hadith number 265. Brother, we did not understand the last part. Can you repeat? Hadith number 265. Uh, I'm uh, I'm not getting it. Can you just slow without ringing, please, for the sake of the shin of Allah? <clears throat> it's in the front of you. What taking it out of context? What is missing to say taking it out of Zakir Naik? Anyway, my friends, did we have a good time today? Uh, I want to say thank you guys for being here and I appreciate your support and I hope to have a live streaming again soon. Uh, I apologize if my equipment is very simple. I don't know how the voice is coming to, to you from your side, but this is what we have, what we can do. I'm using just a tablet and uh, uh, I'm glad that we were able to reach the end and the internet did not lose. So thank you very much for being here. I pray to the Lord that the Muslims will read the chapters which they themselves they mention for us, which is amazing, proving to us that Jesus is our Lord, our Savior. Ask yourself, my friend, where is Jesus now? You say to me in heaven. Answer the question, why? All the reason you give me, proving to me that Islam is stupid. Jesus is just a prophet, brother, but he is the one who will save the world. He is the one who will destroy the Dajjal, the, the Shaitan. He is the one when Shaitan, he see him, he will dissolve like salt that's what muhammad said shaitan don't dissolve when we see muhammad shaitan he gave muhammad words but when he see the messiah according to your prophet he will dissolve like salt so my friend i warn you one day you will stand in the front of the glory of the messiah and you and your prophet will dissolve like salt because you don't follow him i warn you if you don't accept the Messiah, you will dissolve like salt, but in hellfire. If you don't accept the Messiah, you are going to face the consequence. There's only one can forgive you and give you salvation. That is the Messiah. And there's no name better than his name. And this is why even in your Quran, nobody have the name of a Christ except the Christ. 
and right now he is the living Lord in heaven coming back even according to the yellow pages of Islam while Muhammad is dead more than 2,000 years according to Muhammad and Jesus is watching us right now in heaven that is my Lord my friend we are following the Lord the living God the Messiah and you are following the dead rotten Muhammad who was after women and children how dare you how dare you to leave the living beloved holy God and you follow a man who have nothing in target in life except sex and rape and money how dare you how dare you to follow a book and to believe in a book full of errors and stupidity history is wrong biology is wrong creation is wrong everything is wrong even your god could not even quote names correctly how dare you i am a christian prince and this is how we do it love you all and i hope to see you soon again christ is lord and islam is false thank you very much take care